Hey guys, it's Tuesday, uh, July the 2nd. Uh, not a bad day out, but uh, a little foggy and drizzly, so let's get on with it. Alright, so I'll, uh, I'll be up front with you guys right now. It is currently about 20 after 3 in the afternoon. And I've got about, uh, I don't know, a minute and a half of uh, video footage for the whole day. <laughs> Whoops. So, basically what went on, uh, we had herd health this morning. So the vet comes and preg checks the cows and uh, stuff like that. So, that pretty well took up all morning. Uh, and then, just before dinner, uh, there was a cow. Uh, yeah, it was a cow that calved over on the hill with the rest of the dry cows, and that was an ordeal to get her. Oh man, it's always good when they calve over there, and the calf can like immediately run around and stuff. That's great. I really like that. So anyway, we wrangled him and and uh, brought him back into the barn. So that was pretty much their morning, and in the afternoon, um, I was babysitting the little one, and she never woke up till quarter to two so I didn't have much of an afternoon either so anyway we went outside and we checked out what Super Dave was doing I guess they uh, put the spout on the harvester I got a little bit of footage of that just at the tail end so I'll include that right now and uh, we'll check up with you guys here in a few minutes you can watch that or a minute So I'm not sure if I'll uh, get another chance to make an end scene here, but I'll do it now just in case I don't. All right, guys, uh, thanks for watching. I know it wasn't much. We'll get more tomorrow. The little, little one's getting pretty uh, mad here. She wants to go for a nap, I think. <laughs> so we better put her down for a nap. Anyways, uh, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe if you want to. Leave a comment below, all that good stuff. Uh, Hopefully it dries up here later in the week and uh, get some silage made with that harvester. I think uh, hurts for the head is supposed to come on Thursday, so we'll see how that goes. All right, I just put the little one down for a nap, but uh, I don't think it's going very good. Anyway, uh, I wasn't even gonna put a video up today. It's, uh, what is it? Wednesday, July 3rd, right now. Uh, I didn't get much yesterday for video footage, and even today, I don't know how much I'm gonna get. Uh, it's raining right now, so. Anyway, but I did think uh, of this, I could log into my YouTube here and answer a few uh, comments from you guys, so. We'll, uh, we'll do that. Ah, here's one here from yesterday's video. Farmer J. Howell says, left a comment. Well, thank you, Farmer J. Howell. Uh, that's good enough for me because it counts as a comment. And uh, YouTube sees it and says, hey, you got comments on your videos? We'll uh, promote it a bit. So, 
that's uh, that's more than enough. Even if you can't think of something to say, if you say that, that helps out too. Anthony Farming. Great vid. Looks like you had a lot of rain. Corn's up quickly and always a thumb up from me, mate. Take care. How much a thumbs up. Thanks, Anthony Farming. Uh, yeah, we got quite a bit of rain here the last I don't know, few days, I guess. So it's uh, pretty wet. Corn didn't take long coming up either, though. So thanks for the thumbs up. James O'Brien, nice shed. Was that much cheaper than a normal shed? Oh, he's talking about uh, our dome building. We have two of them, uh, of course. So I'm not really sure if it's cheaper or not. Um, it might be. I guess it depends on what steel prices are like. Um, I'm not sure if it would be cheaper than doing like a pole burn. Like a pole burn would be pretty cheap. Um... So yeah, I'm not I'm not 100% sure. That building's about 30 years old. I think it was built in 1990 or somewhere around there. Um, yeah, like I said, we have two of them. We got another one built in 2006. So all it is is like a footing, a concrete footing, and then the building attaches to that. Um, so I would say like a pole burn would probably be cheaper because you wouldn't even need a footing. In that case, you could just put the poles right in the ground but uh, with the steel building you can always put a concrete floor in it too if you wanted to so I guess it depends um, it depends on uh, what you want to do as far as concrete work and stuff so yeah wooden buildings tend to be fairly expensive and then with the wooden buildings uh, like what are you going to put on the outside is it just going to be you know like board and batten or uh, like steel on the outside, steel roof, or is it asphalt shingles? So it kind of depends, I guess. But uh, the steel buildings, the dome buildings, come in like a pretty small package, I guess you could say, just all in little pieces, and then you bolt them all together. So uh, they're good like that, I guess. So they usually have sales on them. Not exactly sure how much they are. Maybe 20, 30 grand, I guess. No idea. Plus your dirt work and concrete and that. So let's see what else we got. David Whitridge. Hope I'm saying that right. Uh, what do you use the scissor lift for? So we have a, a scissor lift. It's an ex-cat rental unit. Uh, we've had it for... A long time uh, not super long I guess I'm not sure when must have been 2009 2010 around there we got it 2008 I'm not 100% sure be in that vicinity anyway so we bought it when we were putting up the burn uh, the new cow burn and uh, we got a lot of, lot of use then uh, you know work around the outside of it work on the inside too um, Actually, not a whole lot. I don't know if I had the scissor lift then or not. Hmm. Work on the inside of it. Because I remember... I remember we had our flat hay wagon with staging on it and driving that around inside too. So I don't remember. Maybe we got the scissor lift later on. But anyway, we did. That's, that was the original purpose of it. We did buy it for working in the barn. Uh, but uh, yeah, now we just keep it. It's just handier than using... Uh, like scaffolding or uh, staging or a ladder or whatever you can just drive that around and it's easy to get on the roof it's a lot safer than a ladder too or scaffolding so we just like it better so we just never got rid of it um, Super Dave uses it for putting up his Christmas lights and that's about it no sense selling it it's too handy Jeff Raymond says, wouldn't it have been easier to take the back wall down and drag it out backwards? Asking for a friend. So he's talking about uh, 
the video clearing out the shed where we took everything out and the hay bine was down in the back corner. <clears throat> Not gonna lie, uh, the thought crossed my mind. But, but uh, putting the shed back together would be too much trouble. I also considered ripping a hole in the side of it and dragging it out that way. But uh, yeah, sometimes you cause more work for yourself doing stuff like that. <laughs> Let's see what else we got for comments. All right, Rusty Old Micro Farm says, Fun video, man that harvester is looking so good. How late into the year does your garden last? So here the growing season will go into September. Um, it'll it'll last through September. Uh, <clears throat> we're a bit late planting, so even my garden is a bit late planting, so it would have been better to get it planted a couple weeks ago. But uh, it is what it is, so it'll last. Uh, it'll last long enough to get everything off of it. I think I don't know what the corn's going to amount to. It didn't work out for me last year, but. Uh, the corn in my garden, I should say, not the corn, uh, not the corn uh, for forage, just my sweet corn. Didn't really work out too good, but <clears throat> we'll, we'll try, try again, I guess. Uh, I don't really, I'm not a big vegetable guy, I don't eat a whole bunch of vegetables, but uh, my grandmother usually walks over and raids the garden on me, but uh, that's fine because I don't use much of it. All I uh, all I put a garden in for mostly is a place to play out my little garden tractors. <laughs> that's mostly what I'm uh, concerned about putting the garden in. So, yeah, a little bit of time with the tractors and 50 bucks worth of seed. It's uh, pretty good entertainment for me. Uh... Most of you guys said no show on the guy when I said to leave a comment with your guess as to whether the guy was going to show up and pick up that baler or not. <clears throat> Most of you guys figured he wouldn't show up. He must be uh, veterans of selling stuff on the internet, I guess. That's usually how it goes. I'll list something, they'll be, oh yeah, I'll come pick her up. I'll be right over. Never see them. Fran Fran 712 left a comment on an older video uh, at my farm I have three white 6710 one white 6710 1998 cab no loader 5700 hours one white 6710 2000 cab and loader 8900 hours one white 6710 2001 no cab no loader 3500 hours no problem so that'd be quite the thing to see and three whites at one uh, one farm that's pretty cool uh, I definitely like the white tractors the Agco white tractors actually the old whites are okay but uh, yeah that 6710 is a right on unit it'd be kind of cool to see one uh, set up as a platform tractor with no cab on it that'd be uh, interesting 3500 hours not a whole lot on it uh, I wish mine only had that much on it. It's uh, right at 7,000 right now. So, and we've got a loader on it too. That'd be a, that'd be a good loader tractor. With the, I don't know if yours got the closed center hydraulics on it or not. I assume it does. So, anyway. The Haven Family Firm. So uh, one of the days there, I didn't, I don't know, I had some technical difficulties, I guess. And I didn't get a chance to post a regular video. So I just, up, I didn't upload it. They're already there. I just made public uh, an old Steiger video that I had. Um, so anyway, uh, he commented on that. The Haven Family Firm. Even though I have no idea what I would do with one of those tractors, I want one anyway. So he's talking about the old Steigers. I think whenever the Steiger name returned, I'm not sure if they're 9200 or 9100 series. But either way, I would like to have one too. Uh, <clears throat> I've seen quite a few of them when I was out west. They're pretty common out there. 
Um, yeah, just such a cool tractor. Uh, you won't see them around here very much. Maybe over in PEI, you might see the odd one, but um, here in Nova Scotia, they're not that common. Um, I think I've seen one. I've seen one of the green stigers, like I think it was like a panther or a cougar or something like that, like a, like a little bit older, um, down in the Annapolis Valley, and that was pretty well it. I don't know if that's in one of my videos or not. I've uh, seen it, one year I've seen it, it was sitting in the back lot at Ben Ostrom's, and then the next year, the year after that, I've seen it, um, they were clearing land or something like that right off the 101. And it was around there somewhere. I think it was around Berwick or Aylesford or it's kind of that general area. So, yeah, they're uh, they're a cool tractor. Um, that video that I posted, I used to watch that all the time when I was a kid. Uh, Dad had that one, and he had the oh, what's the Magnum Showdown. I don't know if I I published that one or not. And then there's like this other one that's like a 10,000 hour teardown or something. I used to watch those all the time. Dad still got them over at his place. Um, Farm Central Ohio. So this one's about the video, uh, the crows eating my corn seeds. We have a farm near some ponds and have had trouble in the past with Canadian geese eating the corn seed out of the ground. That's super frustrating. Fireworks, lol. Bottle rockets <clears throat> and lots of them. Find a friend with lots of spare time. Give them a chair, a lighter, and a cooler of drinks. <laughs> yeah, that would probably work. I was someone with a lot of spare time and who didn't mind sitting out in the rain. Um, it's their thing. But yeah, it's funny. The Canadian geese. We've had Canadian geese around here. Um, well, since. <clears throat> Since early spring, like early spring they showed up and they are there all spring. And now they're gone now somewhere, I don't know where. So it's funny, like, I'm surprised they're not here eating my corn. Because they were here all along. Chris Harding, will you still be able to get it parked in the building now that the cab is on? Or is it destined for an outdoor life from now on? So that's about the, the self-propelled harvester of the 1915. Uh, as you may have noticed, it's fairly high. Um, so we had the cab off it because it wouldn't fit in the shop. But now that it's done, uh, it doesn't have to go back in the shop. So the cab can stay on it. And uh, so I'm not sure exactly how high it is. It's probably 12 or 13 feet, I think. So it'll fit in my uncle's shop, no problem. Um, and it'll fit, I believe it'll fit in the old mill, no, I know it'll fit in the old mill building because it's got the big slide out doors. Uh, I'm not sure how high they are, but it's plenty high to get, uh, to get the harvester in there. We still get the boat in there, so I know it'll fit in there. Um, I'm not sure if it'll fit in the new metal building. Uh, the new metal building's got a little bit shorter door because it's the, the roll up so it may not fit in there but it'll definitely fit in the old metal building and it'll definitely definitely fit in my uncle's shop so uh, it's definitely not going to live outside it might stay outside most of the summer I'm um, not sure we'll see we'll see how it goes we'll see how easy it is to tuck it away in that old metal building but as far as the winter goes it can it'll be in it won't be it won't be staying out all winter and this will be the last one uh, this is Caleb Anderson, a regular viewer. Uh, said, hmm, interesting scarecrow with no face there. <laughs> what brand of tractor overalls was it wearing? So yeah, we, uh, we had a few sticks, but we didn't have anything for a head yet. We may have to do that or something, I don't know. It's not really working too good. I think we might have to put up a couple more. It seems like you put the scarecrow out, and it's good for like a certain area, and then another certain area up here where there's another scarecrow then all the middle of the crows are still there like it's only like a certain radius from the scarecrow that it works and then beyond that the crows are like yeah okay I'm safe up here and then there's another radius you know. so anyway not working 100% but it's better than nothing I guess we'll at least have some corn what the little bastards are doing now 
is they got tired of, or they, maybe they got filled up on picking the corn seed out of the plastic and eating the corn seed. Now the corn's coming up out of the, through the plastic, so they'll rip the corn seedling out, the whole thing, and then they'll eat the corn seed off the bottom of the, like, and the roots, and then they'll just leave it there in the, on the grass, so. That's the new tactic. Anyway, and to answer what brand of tractor overalls were they, was it wearing, the scarecrow? Those are actually old Devco coveralls. Um, I know not many of my viewers are familiar with uh, Cape Breton Island, but that was uh, a big organization. It was a big player in the coal mines and stuff back in the, uh, I don't know how far back it ran, but at least up until the mid 90s, I guess. Uh, Cape Breton Development Corporation is what it stood for, Devco. So, um, most of you guys will have no idea what that is. Uh, some of you in the, in the mainland on this end may have an idea. I know DLK Hay is definitely going to know what it is. So, yeah, that's what that was. They're uh, not, well, they're getting hard to find now because it's, you know, mid-90s since they went, uh, I don't know if they went bankrupt or what it was. I think they just shut, shut down or morphed into another company, ECBC or something like that. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, Divco disappeared in the early 90s, so. Those coveralls are pretty near collectible now. So yeah, anyway guys, that's it for my uh, comments, reading, and answering session. Later.